exercise 13D on solving exponential equations and inequalities on page 100, and, uh, sorry, not 100, 446 of your textbook. Guys at the back, I am recording, remember? So we're solving exponential equations and inequations. A lot of it is pretty similar to what you guys already know. So we can solve equations involving exponentials without using a calculator by either expressing both sides of an equation as the powers of the same base. So remember, same base, we can just focus on the powers. Or we can recognize a polynomial and substitute an exponent in, by a pronumeral, but that's less relevant. It's, that's, that's if we're not using a calculator. If we are using a calculator, how do we do that? How do we solve inequalities? Yeah, just use G-Solve, that's it. There's, there's not, nothing complicated about that. So for, for this first example, does anyone want to try and guess what the first step would be? I've got 4 to the power of something equals to 256. Could I make them the same base? Good, how do we make them the same base? Uh, let's figure out, it's 4 to the power of what? So let's use the letter Y just to make things easier. 4 to the power of Y equals to 256. So what number? Oh, sorry, not, not what number. 4 times by itself, how many times, gives us 256? 4 times 4 gives me? 16 times by 4. 64 times by 4 again. 256, so it's 4 times. And therefore, I know, I know that 4 to the power of 4 is 256. Are we okay with that? Bam. Now, all I have to do is equate these two things. Because they're both equal to 256, don't they? So, 4 to the power of x minus 1 equals the 4 to the power of 4. Therefore, I know that x minus 1 equals to 4. Are we okay with that? Pretty straightforward? Yep. All I did was make them the same base, and then make the powers the same, because it's an equal, uh, it's an equation, sorry. And using that, I get x equals to 5. Okay with that? Evelyn, any questions besides looking out the window? No? Okay. Next one. 5 to the power of... 2x minus 4 equals to 25 to the power of negative x plus 2 girls. This is the last time I'll ask you to stop talking. Same thing. I have to make the powers the same, don't I? Sorry, the base is the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this on the side. Let's ignore that for now. And just focus on this one. So I get 25, which I know is, if I'm trying to make a base 5, is to the power of 2. Pretty straightforward. So 5 to the power of 2 to the power of negative x plus 2. Are we okay with that being the same thing? Riley, can you see that from over there? Awesome. Equals, now if I've got powers of a power, what do I do to the powers? Multiply, multiply thank you, Marissa. So multiply 5 to the power of negative 2x plus 4. All good? Okay. Now I bring back the other one. I get 5 to the power of 2x minus 4. That's from over here, by the way. So now I'm going to equate the powers. I've got the same base. So let's go 2x minus 4 equals to negative 2x plus 4. Are we okay with that? Okay. I'm going to add, four, uh, add 2x on both sides. I get 4x minus 4 equals to 4. Take away, oh, sorry, add 4 on both sides. 4x equals to 8 and therefore x equals to 2. Ideally, we end up with an answer that if I was to substitute x, x equals to 2 back into the original equation, I would get the same thing on both sides. Makes sense? Awesome. Any questions from that? Okay. Here's when it gets a little bit, little bit weird, okay? So we haven't done the graphical rep representation of, of exponential functions, but I want you to try and to consider it anyway. In exponential expressions, where we've got a to the power of x being greater than a to the power of y, it does not necessarily mean x is greater than y. Now, if it's an equal sign, let's ignore that uh, greater than sign. If it's an equal sign, then we know x has to equal to y. But depending on what our base is, that x could be greater or that y could be greater. So we follow this rule right here. And it's a really good idea that if you're not using this a content booklet, that you're updating this in your resource book. If a is greater than 1, so if anywhere from 1 to infinity, if you're presented with this equation right here where a of x, so a to the power of x, is greater than a to the power of y, that means that x has to be greater than y. 
So any value of a, if your base is 1, 600, 7,000, doesn't matter. If it's that number, which is above 1, is a to the power of x greater than a to the power of y, that means x is greater than y. However, if your a value is between 0 and 1, so let's say 0 0.5 or 0 0.75 or whatever it is, if it's between 0 and 1, it's the opposite. Now, 9 times out of 10, you'll be presented with an equation that you just follow that rule. It's pretty intuitive. However, in the situation when your base is between 0 and 1, you have to follow this rule, where if a to the power of x is greater than a to the power of y, then a, uh, x is less than y. Yes, Lucas? Uh, if the base is 1, then which rule do you apply to? You use the first one. Yeah. But if a is a negative value, now we won't do this as much right now, but if a is a negative value, value, sorry, value, you would just simplify it from there. Okay? And also, if a is 1, you know 1 to the power of anything is 1 anyway. Sweet! So that's the graphical representation. We'll go a little bit more into that next time when we actually look at the graphs between exponentials and logarithms. So let's get started. So solving for x. 16 to the power of x is greater than 2. First thing I want to do is make the, what the same? Base. Base, thank you very much. 16, I'm going to write this over here. I know it's the same as 2 to the power of what? 2 times 2 is 4. Times by 2 is 8. Times by 2 is 16. Thank you very much. 4. 16 is the same as 2 to the power of 4. And therefore, I'm going to write 2 to the power of 4 to the power of x. Okay? It's greater than 2. I'm going to expand that by multiplying the powers. We know if it's power to the power, then I multiply it. So 2 to the power of 4x is greater than 2 to the power of what? What's the power if there's no number there? One. Yeah. Now, is my base greater than one? Yes, so we follow this rule up here. In which case, because 4x is over there, and I've got one on this side, following this rule, I know that x is greater than y, so therefore 4x is greater than one. If I divide both sides by four, I get x is greater than one over four. Pretty straightforward? Yeah. Okay. Now this is when it gets a little bit trickier. Same thing, I want to make the base the same. How do I change, well, actually, here's my question. Should I try to make the 2 the base on both sides, or is 1 over 16 the base on both sides? Which one would be easier? The 2, right? So let's make both sides the base of 2. Let's ignore the left hand side and just focus on 1 over 16. Would you agree if I said 1 over 16 is the same as 1 over 2 to the power of 4? Agreed? Happy? Yeah? Happy? Just say yes. Awesome. So, 1 over 2 to the power of 4. If it's 1 over that power, then we make it a negative. Thank you very much. 2 to the power of negative 4. Is that the same thing? Awesome. I'm going to put that back into the equation. I'm going to put that back over here, and I get 2 to the power of negative 3x plus 1 is great, oh sorry, it's less than 2 to the power of negative 4. Ah, are we working with the same thing now? Yeah, we are. Let's just go ahead and do the same thing as usual. It's a, That base is greater than 1. So let's go ahead and do that and go negative 3x plus 1 is less than negative 4. Are we okay with that? Thank you for the approval. All right, from here, I'm going to take away one on both sides, so I get negative 3x is less than negative 5. Yeah? What happens if I divide by a ne or divide or multiply by a negative value in an inequality? Thank you. I have to change this direction. So I end up with x is less than negative 5 on negative 3, which just gives me 5 on 3. I did not change the direction. Ah, see, that was a trick. There we go. I did change the direction now. So x is greater than, sorry, 5 over 3. Any questions about that? No? Okay, I think I have one more question. Oh, I lied. Two more questions over here. This is, what happens if I have multiple terms? If you're still copying, I'll show you the stuff later. Alright, same thing. I'm going to try and make them all the same base. Or at least as similar as I can. At least as, as similar as possible, sorry. So... 9x, I know I can make that into 3 to the power of 2 to the power of x. Are we okay with that being the same thing? Yep, sweet. Equals to, 
12 times 3x. Would you agree if I said that 12 is the same as 4 times 3, and then I have times 3 to the power of x? That being the same thing as this. All good with that? Sweet. There we go. And what is negative 20, oh, sorry, what is 27 as a power with a base of 3? The power of 3. Power 3, thank you very much. So what I've done here is I've tried to make, uh, make as many of the terms have a base of 3 as possible. So I'm going to continue from there. I'm going to go and get 3 to the power of 2x equals 2, 4 times 3 to the power of x plus 1 minus 3 to the power of 3. Any questions about that? No? Okay. So from there, what we could do is we can actually focus on it as a quadratic. So what the textbook's gone ahead and done is they said, well, we have 3x to the power of 2, or the same thing around, because what they've done is they've just done it the other way around. You guys agree that's the same thing? Yeah. They said that's equal to that, which equals to, and I'm just going to do this in a different color so we can see, x power of 2, which equals to 12 times 3 to the power of x minus 27. Now, if we let, let a equal to 3 to the power of x, we end up with this equation right here. a squared equals to 12 times a minus 27. Same thing? Happy with that? Thierry, can you see? Awesome. So I'm just going to rearrange it so I get a squared equals to negative 12a. Oh, sorry. A, let me redo that, sorry. a squared minus 12a plus 27 equals to 0. And from here, it's just a, it's just a basic quadratic that we're aware of. How can I solve that? I can use cross method, can't I? Yeah. What values multiply to give me 27, but add to give me negative 12? 9 and 3. 9 and 3? Positive or negative? Uh, negative for both. Sweet. So I end up with a minus 9, a mi minus 3 equals to 0. That's a 9, sorry. I'll fix that up. And I get a equals to 9 or 3. Now, if a equals to 3... Am I done there? No, I have to substitute it back in, don't I? So I'm going to substitute it back in. I get uh, a, which is 3 to the power of x, equals to 3. Therefore, what is x equal to? 1. Thank you very much. Over here, you've got a to the power of 3, which is... Th uh, sorry, 3 to the power of x, sorry, equals to 9. And therefore, x equals to? 2. And those are our two answers. So there's two ways of doing it. My approach is to try and make everything the same base. And if the same base doesn't really give you a value that you're looking for, what you can do is actually try to find and substitute the, val the values as polynomials. So if I go back to this first step over here, it says we can either express both sides power of the same base, which is what we did in the first attempt. Girls. And then we can recognize a polynomial and, ex and substitute an exponent by a polynomial, which is what we just did. Any questions about what we've done today? No? Awesome. I'll let you guys get started on exercise 13D.